the joy of fabric work. Well, here we are. Uh, vertical stabilizer. Uh, part of it is covered here. I got to do this little part right there. And it is moving along. <laughs> I don't like fabric work. It's not hard. It's just, it's not my favorite. But, um, so I iron this side. And if I can come around here, that's pretty tight quarters here. But yeah, you can see nice and tight, like the um, rudder. But it'll be cool to kind of get that stuff put on here once I uh, once I get this on and painted. So like I said, I'll do this little section, and I'm going to cover the back side and have a nice uh, vertical side on here. And, you know, you know what I didn't do is I didn't look to see if the rudder has it on the same side. Hopefully it does, but if it doesn't, it's not going to be that big of a deal, I guess. But what what I mean is that when I cover it, it's going to come across here and then you're going to see, you know, the seam tape um, on that side. Actually, you probably won't, you'll, you won't see anything but the seam tape, so I guess that's, that's, uh, that's fine. But yeah, either way, hopefully it'll come out okay. All right, drilled out my holes for the instruments. I got the instrument set, um, so I'm gonna mount them from behind. And uh, I kind of, what I did is I put them from behind and uh, drilled just a little starter hole so I could see it, a little place hole. And then uh, took the instrument away and then drilled all the way through. And I tried to match it with the screws. So the way I'm gonna do this instrument panel is uh, on the left is gonna be my airspeed indicator and the middle is gonna be my tachometer. And on the right is going to be my al uh, altimeter. So I had to uh, cut out the little section there for um, uh, for dialing in the uh, the altimeter setting. And uh, I'll show you here in a minute. But I just used a, I actually just used a hacksaw. You can use probably just like a um, you know like a jigsaw or something like that to do it. But uh, I just I, I I had a little bit better control with it and I could do it slow. Uh, so I came out okay. And then I'm um, going to have down here the EGT, the compass, and my CHT. Uh, exhaust gas temperature or cylinder head temperature and then I've got just the power switch there and then the, uh, the ignition switch so um, everything looks looks pretty good I just try to drill it like I said to, to the holes and uh, I'll go ahead and install it and show you what that looks like goes down here finally got the instruments in there took forever uh, these things are pretty pretty tough to, to get in there you know just just right with the little holes and stuff but I got it so I actually went ahead and secured the instrument panel on so from the back it looks good and I'll wire what I can up tomorrow I'm gonna put it into sort of a flexible plastic hose and I'm gonna run it along um, I think I can't I think I'm gonna run it on this side down through the uh, fuselage ribs all right, I wrapped the shock cord with my son. He uh, was a trooper. We did uh, four more wraps, and um, this is kind of the, um, if you can't, uh, I guess what Tom did is he he, um, he strengthened the bungee cord by 5%, so it's harder to get the amount of wraps out of it. You need 24 wraps, and so because we did it this way, um, he sent me a couple extra pieces with a couple extra links. And so we just wrapped it around like that, just to kind of give it, you know, to make sure it was the full 24 and it's probably like 25 actually on either side so it's really strong um, and uh, yeah then the, the gas can gas can is back on and uh, the tank and then I re-riveted the uh, the back pieces I'm gonna install the seat cushions the aft seat cushions and uh, see what other little things I can get done today <laughs> footage here of being able to see a rivet pop so I've got the one here I just pulled the rivet for the uh, velcro on the other side and uh, these are just the large headed aluminum rivets um, I don't know if you can see that there it is uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wrap the camera around here and film it because it's pretty cool to see how the rivet works and you know you just don't get to see it much from this end you know typically you're seeing it from you know just the, the top head so uh, I'll get some video of this
again, this part was, um, it's not hard, but you gotta be really meticulous with it, um, with uh, putting the horizontal stabilizers on, making sure they're, they're level. Uh, so I got the struts installed with the uh, laser, these are called laser U-brackets right here. So I got those all installed, and um, again, it's not difficult. This is the placement where you wanna put it on the Longeron tubes, just ahead of this little guy right here. That little um, bracket right there that's holding up the vertical stabilizer. And then on the back, you want to put it right about there. Now, if you put it too far forward, um, which I've seen some people do, and it's fine. First of all, if you look down here, this looks pretty straight with, with the back of the uh, horizontal stabilizer. But second of all, is it's hard to get the bolt on or the uh, the nut on. I'm sorry. You know, you go, you got to go in here, and you just put your finger on the end of a uh, of the uh, wrench, and then you can kind of tighten it from this end. So that that worked out pretty good. Um, you want to keep it, you want to make sure it's about an inch and a half from the end of the Longeron tube. So that's that. And then uh, everything's on here loosely because I'm going to paint it, you know, so it's all set to be painted. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you just got to be, you got to go really carefully. Uh, you got to have at least leave a half an inch of uh, on the edge of the tube here on, on these strut tubes, um, 27 inch tubes. You leave a little bit. Um, I found myself cutting off a little piece uh, on the, uh, on the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer, just about a half an inch. Um, but but on the back, I did not need to. So, um, and again, I, I just used this triangle and uh, I, I have the fuselage level. So I put a level between the, uh, on, on the seat crossbars, the, um, at the bottom of the seats. And then you just make sure it's level. And then here it is, it's it's level. And if you look, you know, all all throughout, so you can do the, the, the um, the leading edge and the trailing edge strut and just make sure that it's it's level all throughout and it looks great so it's really good with the vertical stabilizer and there's other ways you can do it um tom says you could side it up with your eyes and the, actually it looks really good from here it's really straight or you could set it up with your eyes or you could um uh you know use tape like filament tape across the top of the vertical stabilizer however you want to do it Got the elevators all um, straightened out with the horizontal stabilizers and uh, I've got the elevator horns kind of temporarily installed and I'm going to do the push-pull tubes now for uh, for the elevators so you got to have this one right in the middle and uh, and then I'll connect up the ones that I did earlier I think these I did I did uh, the ball end joints on one side and then I'll just measure them and do the ball end joints on the other should be the I think it should come out to be uh, the, the, the length that I want, so I could probably go ahead and install them. Okay guys, um, here, it, here we are with uh, elevators on, rudders is installed. I've got the rudder horn installed over there and you can see the push-pull tube for the rudder. I've, got, I've already um, laid out. I haven't riveted it yet. I've got to drill out here and rivet it. The factory just kind of had it taped right there for me. So, um, And then there's a side, there's a um, piece at the end that you could trim, and then I could put in the insert there, depending on how uh, far you need your push-pull tube. So I think that actually that distance is going to work okay, but uh, I, I need to just rivet it in place and then look from there. But uh, what you want to do is have your rotor pedals, of course, right where you want them. Uh, the nose wheel steering, I don't have that connected yet, but I will just connect that and make sure the nose wheel steering is straight, the rudders are where you want them to be, um, their position, and then wherever is comfortable. And I think that was comfortable. And then just a uh, neutral rudder. So that's the key, right? Just to have everything in alignment. Um, so going to do that and then I'll show you what that looks like. 